All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the CBR VFR hybrid build where we're taking this 2004 VFR 800, basically converting it into a CBR with a V4 engine. And if you want to be the owner of this bike when it's done, just go over to Patreon, sign up to support the build series. You can qualify to win this bike. What we're going to do today is we're replacing the stator, we're replacing the regulator rectifier. These are two common failures on this bike. Yeah, and I really want to thank the guys over at Rick's Motorsports Electronics. Um, these guys hooked me up with some good stuff. We have the regulator rectifier that's made for the lithium ion battery for this bike. And they sent me this connector kit, which is really nice. Let's check it out here. It's got all the connectors you'd ever need for whatever electrical project you have. And um, so that's very generous of them. But before we dig into today's build, I want to recap the things we've done on the bike so far in case you're new here and just uh, bring everybody up to speed. So you can see here, I've got the whole front end ripped off the bike. What's happening is we're changing out the conventional forks into a pair of more modern upside down forks. So the wheel and the triple clamps have been shipped to Cognito Moto. They're the ones making the new triple clamps. They're gonna need those to spec out the clamps. And then what I've done is I've ordered a set of upside down forks for the Kawasaki ZX-10R and also a set of brake calipers. So those are going to Cognito Moto 2. So when they get that all done, We'll get that front end bolted back on. We've mounted up a set of Vortex CBR1000 um, rear sets. Completely rebuilt the whole back wheel with bearings and seals, new sprocket. We swapped out the stock VFR800 shock for a CBR954 shock. Had it completely rebuilt. Fresh nitrogen, fresh oil, powder coated the spring. Completely new braking system on this bike. No more link braking where if you hit the front brake, it automatically applies the back brake new brake disc, rebuilt the whole real brake caliper. One of my favorite parts of the build is the Seb Speed see-through clutch cover. This is something you normally see on the high and exotic bikes. I just think it's a great looking feature for this bike. And if you saw one of the recent episodes, you know that we pulled off the whole frame, got it powder coated, that's back on now. For the back wheel, we got it freshly powder coated, mounted up with aggressive Metzler Street Knobby tire. All right, guys, so as you can see, I already have the stator in the bike. I had to do this because I needed to route the wiring through the engine to the other side while the frame was off. So we're going to kind of step back in time right now to when I was pulling everything apart before this stage. So let's do that now. Basically, what the stator does is quite simple. It generates electricity that goes to the battery, but it's AC current. So that electricity needs to go through the regulator rectifier to convert it to DC current, then it goes to the battery. So we're gonna dig into that. I'm gonna show you how that's done. And then, uh, and I really wanna get it done quick because I wanna get off the side cover so I can get that over to the powder coater too, get that done while the frame's getting done. So uh, let's just dig right into it. Just about every street bike out there has the stator on the left-hand side. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off this case right here. You can see this is the electrical that runs through the engine to the other side. I'm gonna unhook that first. Then we're gonna pull this off. Okay, so now we're on the other side of the bike now. This is where the wire comes through. And this wire's in pretty bad shape. The wires have been spliced, probably because this connector is gonna be hard to get through here. And then look at this. These are the wires coming from the regulator rectifier. That one's broken now. These things have just been fried. Really bad shape. So we're gonna replace the regulator rectifier also. But today, I'm just gonna unplug this and uh, feed this through. I'll probably cut these wires here so I can get it through easier. Let's do that right now. Let's cut them back here. There we go. And then we just pull the harness through here. Easy as that. And then now we're just gonna pull out the case here and get to the stator. So this thing is magnetic, so you'll feel a little bit of resistance trying to get it off. I can barely get my hands on it, there's no room. Maybe, there we go. 
magnet's pretty powerful too, so it's a little tricky getting it off. There we go. So this is your flywheel, and here's the stator. Now you can see here, look, see how these are green? It's probably a good thing that we're changing this out anyways, so let's pull it out of the case. You also want to make sure that you replace the gasket anytime you pull off a case like this. So removing the stator is super easy. Just take out these two bolts. And then there's another bolt down here that holds the cable. And there you go. It's that easy. So looking at this, man, it's not looking real great. You can see how nice these look. And then look how dark it gets over here. That's been getting hot. You can see there's been some melting here. So probably a good idea that we're replacing this for sure. And so I just poured a little gasoline on the inside of the case. I'm cleaning it out to take this over to the powder coater. This over here doesn't have to be super clean. This will get all sandblasted before they powder coat it. So just kind of getting some of the heavy stuff off. One thing I like to do before I take my parts over to the powder coater is I'll take this black Gorilla Tape and I'll mask off any areas where I don't want them to sandblast or powder coat. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a layer of tape over this backside and that tells them where not to do those things. So And then after you do that, just come along with a sharp blade and just trim it back. All right, so I got the corners all cleaned up around here. I'm also taking them the counter shaft cover. I got a little bit of masking done right here. Look at this though before I go. This is the uh, old stator. This is the new one. You can see the difference. Look how black that one is. Yeah, I think we're ready for an upgrade. So I'm gonna run these cases over to the powder coater right now. So today we're at a point where I'm gonna go ahead and this is just sitting here. I'm gonna pull this out, mount it to the inside of the uh, engine cover. We did get it powder coated, our nice uh, matte black we're doing on this bike. So this is going to mount inside of here. We'll go to the other side and get the connectors all mounted up and get the new regular rectifier mounted up from Rick's. Now I do want to say this, this stator is from RM Stator. They're the ones that hooked me up with this, so hats off to them. Let's go to the other side, get the connectors all hooked up, get the regular rectifier on there, and um, get that handled. So the first thing I want to focus on is this is the cable that's coming from the stator on the other side. And what I did was I took this connector off because it was just too bulky to feed through the engine and basically just took the connectors and wrapped them with some electrical tape so I could just feed it through easily. Nice little trick if you're struggling with this. I guarantee you, if you're trying to feed this through there, it's going to be very difficult, if impossible. So what I did was, I think all three of these wires can be mounted anywhere in this, but I'm no electrician, so what I did was I marked them with some dots to reconnect them and where they came out of. So they're simply just going to slide in. Uh, so we got the three dots there. This one's got three dots. So that one will go, see if I can remember which direction these go in. Yeah, so they go this way. Slide it into a clicks. This one's got no dots. So it goes in the middle. And then the two dots. There we go. Good to go. So what you're seeing here, these are the wires from the VF harness that we've already mounted up. It's to help regulate the voltage going through this bike so things don't get overheated. Speaking of overheating, look at these wires coming from the regulator rectifier. They are fried. So we're gonna, this is the old one here. We're gonna pull this off. And these were, this would have normally been plugged into the stator right here. It's already been unplugged, of course. And then we have another plug here that went into the VF harness. So all we've got to do right now is just pull this connector apart. Then we have the new rectifier here from Rick's. Plug this in here. 
It's always nice to have all new fresh connectors, huh? Look at those things. And then we're going to plug this into the stator. And done. So now we're just going to mount this up. So you see these two bolt holes right here? This is where we're going to mount the rectifier. And we're going to aim the wires downward. You don't want them sticking up like that. So we're just going to put it in like this. We'll kind of tuck these in back here. This is the ground coming off the VF harness. That's going to mount to this bolt right here. So let's just wiggle this thing on in here. There's a lot of wiring on this bike, I have to say. Grab our eight millimeter socket. Okay. And then just stick the bolt through that and then go through the rectifier. There's just so much stuff in my way. I'm not too worried about all this because it'll be hidden once we get the fairings on there. So let's go ahead and Snug this down while we're at it. It's just comforting knowing there's all new updated electricals on this bike. New stator, new battery, new rectifier, new connectors, via harness. Now we shouldn't have to worry about any of this electrical stuff. All right, so we obviously can't have this running on the outside of the frame. And this has got to run back to the battery. This is part of the via harness. So what we're going to do is just feed this uh, between the frame and the engine, possibly. Wow, there's a lot of stuff in the way. Let's see if I can do this. All right, guys, so if you can see this here, I'm feeding this just at the base of the frame here where this water hose is coming out. I was able to turn around the corner and I'm just feeding it straight up right here. It's about to pop out right here. It's a tight squeeze, but you can do it. There we go. Now we don't have any wires covering up our nice new frame. All right, so what I've done here is I just took the powder coated case and I just took some wire and ran it around the frame right here. So it's just kind of hanging here. Because once I get this mounted in here, I don't want to put pressure on these wires. And this will make it easier to work on. So this is already slipped in here. It's magnetic, so I need to pull it out. So I just grabbed a couple of long bolts I had laying around. Let's see if this works. I'm just going to kind of use these to get a hold of it. That magnet's pretty strong. Yeah, there we go. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get these rubber grommets in this slot right here. So let's just basically try not to scratch this thing. All right, so those are in there. So now we got these grommets in here. Now this bracket right here is what's going to hold these wires down there. Let me see if that's going to work. Now, so we got these two bolts in. Make sure these wires are tucked in behind this bracket here. Got one still kind of hanging out. All right, guys, so as you can see here, I have the wires coming down behind this bracket, underneath this bracket at the base, and then they wrap around here and they connect to the stator right here. And then I've got these two bolts here. I'm still tightening these up. All right, look at that. It looks so nice having this nice shiny new stator in here, doesn't it? So we'll just get the new gasket here, put this on. Not today's video. Well, I'm gonna I'll reroute this so it's behind this hose here. I just caught that, but um, yeah. But I think in the meantime we can get this put back on. This is the uh, counter shaft cover, and um, it also holds the speedometer and the uh, clutch actuator here. So. Let's see if we can get this bad boy on. 
the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the chain out and wrap it around the counter shaft sprocket while I can get easy access to it. I love EK chain. These things last a good long time and the master link is super easy to put on. Um, just takes a couple nuts that screw on and snap it off. So let's put this on first. So it looks like this hose goes through this bracket. Yeah, let's just feed it through. It's being stubborn. So this is the uh, clutch actuator here. I don't know if they call it the slave cylinder or what. So I put tape around it just to keep the piston in, otherwise the piston wants to work its way out. So just wrap some Gorilla tape around it. You can see right here, this is the piston that goes outward. So that's still in place. Man, this stuff is sticky. Good lord. All right, so this is gonna go on here. Like this. So the longer bolt goes in the top here, obviously. And then now we got the speedometer here. Real simple install. Just finagle it in there. Huh. It's not very pretty the way they run that thing right there, huh? Not real pretty at all. All right, looks like she's all done. All right, guys, well, I guess that about does it for this episode. There's not much more we can do right now. Um, hopefully I can find a subframe pretty soon off a, like a 2019 CBR 1000RR. We can start getting the back end built. Um, I am still waiting on the monster fairings. They had some huge delays because of COVID. And then I found out it's a pretty long lead time to get those made. I think they're made overseas, so. That's like a six week deal. And I think they started processing the order about two weeks ago. So those are still three or four weeks off, which makes things a little difficult when it comes to uh, getting everything figured out here. But um, don't forget to go check out the Patreon if you want to own this bike when it's done. I also got some really big news. If you guys know me, you know I was a designer for Speed and Strength for a while, about three years. And then uh, that brand moved to Canada. So I've not been working for the last seven months, just doing all my videos here in the garage and enjoying life. And it's been great, but uh, it's time to go back to work. And funny story is, um, because of COVID, Tucker pulled out of sponsoring this build, but I got another build that I'm getting ready for. It's my Hardy Street Glide. And Tucker pulled out of that build also, which means I have to go to each company directly to get the parts that I need. Well, so I've made contact with some, some good brands and one of them happens to be Performance Machine. And long story short is we talked about what they're gonna get me for the bike. Babe. I'm recording. I'll be right there. 
they're gonna hook me up with a nice set of wheels. And I said, hey, can I go to your website and check out these wheels? I wanna see what they look like. And the guy says, no, they're not on the website yet. Our website needs to get updated. And we finished our phone call and I started thinking, man, if their website's not up to date, maybe these guys need a graphic designer. That's what I do, like design websites, advertising, videos, a lot of different things. And um, I mentioned it to him and sent him my resume and portfolio. Next thing I know, three days later, I'm in there for an interview. Got hired that day, so about uh, Monday of last week, I had my first day over Performance Machine, and I'm really excited about doing design work for this company. And we're also in charge of Progressive Suspension and a brand called Burley. So um, a lot of big changes for me in my life, and I'm pretty excited about it. Anyways, guys, that's it for today. See you guys next episode.